Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 11th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon. Here goes our system coming through the area today, bringing some precipitation across BC, Washington, and Oregon today. Oregon's going to be the main winners here, including down towards the Siskiyou. As this system moves across Oregon, weakens, and then moves southeast, and then we're going to build a ridge across the area. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as well. A couple interesting solutions showing up in the European also. So we'll do that here in a moment. You can see C Seattle again below average you can see 35 46 no precipitation probably not any precipitation for the next few days across the region also happy veterans day also out there national weather service spokane always with a good graphic out there still telling you how to dress though now taking a look here medford oregon here check out this elevated risk for sneakerways and really anytime during the fall and winter this is a good uh, thing to keep in the back of your mind here if you're along the washington oregon and british columbia coast even down towards northern california as well because these waves are nasty they have logs in them even on relatively calm days you can still get sneaker waves so heads up for that uh, national weather service sacramento check this out frost advisor that cold air has made its way down into california pretty unusually cold down there through california so heads up for that you can see the frost advisory for um, the bay area really except for the major metropolitan uh, you know the main cities are kind of out of it except san jose is included there too <clears throat> But yeah, just thought I'd share that from California here. It's Los Angeles too, talking about the several cold nights expected for your interior sections down there. So California getting in on the little chilly air. Also, as you can see here, the temperature anomaly, the Intermountain West, you can see is well below average here. And you can see much of California below average as well as we get this polar lobe kind of spread cold air all the way down the West Coast of North America here. Now Pacific Northwest, here goes our weather system here. You can see it curl into Oregon here, just bring a little bit of light snow, the Washington Cascades, BC is getting there main amounts uh, mainly through this morning here then you can see the system move down across the oregon cascades the siskiyou is getting some snowfall there as this dies down into northern california and relative weakens relatively quickly here as it moves through nevada and we're going to build a ridge we'll take a look at that here in a moment but you can see some total snow here coming across the area some you know a few inches there across the oregon cascades down towards the siskiyous as well looks like the northern california siskiyous are going to be favored here in this setup if that system then weakens and brings a little bit of snowfall to the Sierra Nevada here. You can see not much for the Washington Cascades, though BC coastal range gets a bit of snowfall as well. Now taking a look here is the European versus the GFS, 18,000 feet. Let's take a look at what's coming here. You can see the system moving through, good agreement in the short term as always. Then the ridge starts to build here. Another little weak ripple moves down into Oregon here on both models here. A little bit stronger on the GFS, but here goes the ridge. And look at this sucker build all the way into Alaska on both models here. Now we're dealing with this on Wednesday morning here. And then you can see something starts to change here. We get a little clip from this polar lobe here. And it's kind of interesting on the European here as we get a little bit of Pacific moisture undercutting the ridge also with this polar lobe moving through and a little bit of an Arctic front moving down across the area. We'll take a look at that in more detail here in a moment. You can see the GFS, a little bit more polar lobe here, but it's more of a dry intrusion on the GFS. But look at this ridge over Alaska, BC as we go through the extended. Then it starts to weaken and shift around a bit more. But you can see the discrepancy in the model here as the GFS, the polar lobe, much more over Canada and much more towards the Great Lakes on the European here. But it looks like the Gulf of Alaska troughing might start to get going here as we start to go through a, what mid November 20th time frame. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a little more detail. I want to show you this. This is the European against the GFS. Now, here goes the system today. And we build the ridge. You can see we remain relatively dry across the area. You can see there's no precipitation across BC, Washington, Oregon here. And then as we go on into Wednesday here, now you can see the Arctic front on both models here sliding down through BC and Alberta here. And you can see the high pressure building in behind it. You can see the GFS is further east with this feature here. This would impact places like eastern BC, Idaho, Montana a bit more. But you can see it stretches all the way across into western BC here. And you can see a bit of Pacific moisture on the European start to enter the equation here as we move through later next week. So this would be interesting for some areas. We're going to continue to watch this system. It's going to change, no doubt. But pretty good agreement in just that an Arctic high is going to kind of try to sag down south over BC and Alberta. Should not have a lot of moisture to work with so the positioning and the trajectory of the system is going to mean a lot we'll see how this trends over the next few runs here but kind of interesting seeing the european and the gfs in agreement generally here at about hour 168 with some kind of arctic front moving down across pacific northwest so we'll continue to watch that now taking a look here 850 millibar temperatures here you can see our weak system moving through as we go, you can see that cold air just kind of moved down and sag southeast. Now what we're looking for is this next Arctic air mass 
coming down to the north. You can see GFS and European pretty good agreement here with bringing some cold air down. GFS, you can see this run into the Rocky Mountains here, the terrain feature here, which really saves us. Check this out on the Euro. This air would dive much further south had the Rocky Mountains not been here. So it's kind of a natural protecting barrier here from much of the Pacific Northwest. We get a little clip of it move into British Columbia here, and then it sags down south across the Pacific Northwest. But you can see the Rockies really shut most of this cold Arctic air off to the east here. GFS being colder here as we look towards next week, the end of next week. But that would be associated with the Arctic front here. It's kind of showing you that diagram of how these Arctic air masses run into the Rocky Mountains and have a really hard time getting into the Pacific Northwest full-fledged Arctic blast from this direction here. Now you can see here, this is the parent temperature. You can kind of see the warm air brought up in front of this weak system here. But you can see as we go on, like, for example, into tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, you can see the chilly temperatures over Montana, Idaho, Yellowstone out here, even eastern Washington, Oregon. Um, relatively warmer here, of course, because we have the moderating influence of the Pacific Ocean here for western Oregon, Washington, southwest BC, Vancouver Island. We get to warm up a little bit more and not deal with the really... Very chilly temperatures that you can see some of the areas getting here east of the Cascades on towards the Intermountain West, Montana, and Idaho out there. Now taking a look here, this is dew point. I want to show you guys this frontal system rolling across. This is the same polar lobe that got us here in the Pacific Northwest. You can see the frontal system as we go through this morning. It's located it's past Chicago now, moving through Texas. You can see really the warm, moist air out ahead of it. Again, this is dew point if I didn't just mention that. Uh, but this is really warm, moist air ahead of this frontal system with very dry, cold air behind it. And look at this front just chopped down across the 48 states here. And all the way out over the Gulf of Mexico here and off the East Coast. Pretty interesting feature here as you can see the dry air move all the way down even into Florida, the northern half of Florida, getting some pretty dry air in there. But down here in the subtropics, it's tough to keep that moist air out of there for long. As you can see, the frontal system moved through and then it kind of brings this moisture back into Texas here. Just kind of an interesting diagram here of what's going on across the rest of the country. Now you can see Seattle, Tacoma. This is probably dealing with that Europe, the Europeans showing here some of that Pacific moisture trying to make its way in in association with that Arctic front dropping down out of the north here. This doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be snow all the way down into the lowlands across western Washington, Oregon, and BC at this point right now it's a pretty tough trajectory but once you get inland you can start to get snow at some of the lower elevations so we'll continue to watch this system as it comes up here and see what the changes bring for us this is spokane this is snowfall 24 hour snowfall totals you can kind of see where that arctic front comes down here some of the ensemble starting to pick up on that signal there uh, this is also for spokane here this would be that arctic air moving down you can see some lower um, single digits in here this is six hour minimum temperature here so you can see some chilly air moving in through later next week with that arctic front here we'll and then possibly a warm up after that we'll continue to watch it as we go but you can see the arctic air mass in place now the chilly temperatures for the next few days for spokane especially overnight early morning Six to 10 day temperature out, like you see, not much has changed. Much of the country is below average here. And now taking a look here, you can see our six to 10 day precipitation outlook uh, below average here, Pacific Northwest here. Now taking a look here, eight to 14 day, you can see this starts to wane a bit here and uh, still most of the country below average, but eight to 14 day precipitation still starting to bring back in some Pacific moisture here for the Pacific Northwest. We'll see how that goes. There's no definitive signal as of yet. And if you guys missed it yesterday, there's a new uh, discussion out there and it talked about 76% chance of La Nino uh, making it through February. But then models are in pretty good agreement. We're going to be crawling out of this La Nina into a neutral transition and potentially El Nino might be around for the following year or maybe the year after that. I mean, we might spend a year in the neutral territory. We're not sure just yet, but it looks like La Nina is going to be on the way out as we start into later winter here across Pacific Northwest. This was also released yesterday in case you missed it here. We're down to moderate drought, Western Washington, Eastern Washington. So check this out. This is the actual soundings for Quileute, Washington here. And you can see as we get into the summertime, of course, the temperatures at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet are going to be much warmer. And you can see how we drop down during the season here. Here's the most recent sounding here, right about average, pretty normal for this time of year. Um, but it's kind of interesting because we do still launch weather balloons across the country every single day. So it helps us with our forecasting. And you can see here weather balloons. You can see a guy releasing one of these weather balloons here and they can go way up into the atmosphere over 
over 100,000 feet. I've actually had pilots from Alaska Airlines report back to me that they've seen these sometimes up in the atmosphere and they get really huge because, you know, the atmosphere weighs less up there and the pressure inside the balloon makes them really huge before they eventually pop. And, and if you ever find one of these, you know, from a weather balloon, you can actually return it to the National Weather Service office. I believe they still have instructions on them to how to return it to the office. So pretty interesting uh, thing. I think we released uh, 92 a day. If I'm not mistaken here, I may be mistaken on that, but I think it's about 90 a day. Now, looking at here, the Atlantic Ocean, this is the tropical system, Nicole, out here. You can see this move up across. You see it battling with the cold front. And really, the tropical systems are great conveyors of uh, tropical moisture and heat from the equatorial regions here towards the pole. So this might spawn an atmospheric river or a strong storm downstream towards Portugal or Spain, maybe for England out there. Who knows? But you can see the dry air really overspread the region here and really bring this moisture across the planet here uh, that subtropical and subtropical moisture it's kind of an interesting thing there if you're paying attention to that tropical storm and the coal down there so yeah that's what we got we're hopefully you know going to pick back up again here towards uh, maybe later november november 18th and later we might get some systems rolling back through here but it looks like we might get an arctic air mass sagging south again towards the area and uh, you know Fingers crossed it might be bring some impactful weather across portions of the Pacific Northwest. We just don't know quite yet. We're going to try to watch these model runs. It's really the first one where we've had some decent agreement here coming up, or the first one that I've noticed anyway. But I'll continue to watch that over the next uh, couple of days, of course. We'll see if anything changes. There's pre some pretty good discrepancy in just the location of some of these polar lobes moving across northern Canada here. And so we're uncertain when this ridge is going to break down for sure and start to introduce the Pacific systems back into the Pacific Northwest west but fear not it will come eventually and uh, you know maybe we'll get another shot at some snowfall here later this month or maybe december or january we'll just have to see what the winter brings but anyway we are in a moderate la nina right now still in charge but we should be transitioning out towards neutral conditions and maybe even an el nino coming up here in the next year or two so anyways hope you guys are having a good day i've got the next windstorm video ready to go i just uh, i have a i'm working for the next few days so i need to get one more day off here at home so i can wrap it up and send it out to you guys so windstorm video is on its way here probably in the next week so um yeah anyway uh, click like subscribe and i will talk to you guys tomorrow